After finishing school at 18, Knopfler left home and journeyed south to Essex to train as a journalist, only to return north a year later when he was offered a job in Leeds as a cub reporter on the Yorkshire Evening Post. Musically, I was slowly starting to put together a couple of songs, but the journalism was a really great thing for a kid to do because um, it toughened me up and it, and it, 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 it meant that you had to get yourself organised halfway, not that I ever really did. And in fact, I don't know whether I was tough enough to be a newspaper man. I didn't have the printer's ink running in my veins, uh, and I think it has to. During the six years Knopfler spent in Leeds, he continued to play music in various lineups. He also enrolled at Leeds University to continue his studies in English. This would lead to Knopfler accepting a teaching job in Essex. But the desire to get his songs recorded wouldn't go away. The songs were being pushing and pushing, you know, just put it push harder and harder. And I suppose I was writing um, more of them. So it was just adding to their weight to the to the door frame. Sweet surrender on the key side. Against the background of the now emerging punk rock scene, Knopfler, age 27, along with brother David on guitar, John Ilsley on bass, and Pick Withers on drums, formed the group that would become dire straits. By the time I actually managed to get dire straits together, the little lineup that we had, um, the songs that had been pushing so hard that they actually pushed me out of a job and at last had what I could see was um, th the way ahead to just to get these songs recorded. Radio London DJ Charlie Gillett was persuaded by the group to play their demo tape on his radio show. This led to them being signed by Vertigo Records. Finally, Knopfler had found an outlet for his songs. On the 16th of May, 1978, Dire Straits made their TV debut, playing the song that would become their calling card. Get a shiver in the dark, it's raining in the park. Sultan's a Swing is like a kind of a situation tune, I suppose. I was living in Deptford at the time, and uh, there was a little pub around the corner, a dingy little place. Coming in out of the rain, I hear the jazz go down. There was nobody in except some lads playing pool in the corner and uh, a little Dixieland jazz band playing uh, on a little stage at one end. We on down south. We on down south, London town. Because nobody was applauding or anything like that. The guy announced that we're the Sultans of Swing, you know. Good night. And it, they couldn't have been less Sultans of Swing. We are the Sultans. We are the Sultans of Swing. Having been a, a kid reporter, I think it really did help me organise material, be able to make sense out of what I was looking at. For some reason, something reverberates with the writer and, and they note it, they mark it, and it goes into the junkyard, you know, and, and it may or may not find a home somewhere. A lot of the things that you, you improvise in the studio become part of the furniture of the thing. Certainly with Sultans, the, the, the stuff at the end, all that stuff, if you don't do that, it's not Sultans of Swing anymore. The people would feel, oh, well, that's not why I spent all that money on a ticket. I think was a massive hit all over the world and the first album was a massive hit all over the place and it was a real avalanche of activity. 
what happens to, to, to a lot of successful acts is that the business starts to channel them along, you know, and you're out there touring and you're getting used to playing in bigger places and it's all experience, all that, all that stuff. But it, it comes at the expense of something. After the worldwide success of the first album, the group's second album, Communique, and its single, Lady Writer, was viewed by many as a disappointment. You're out there playing live, but all the time you're doing that, you're not writing. And all the time you're doing that, you're not even really practicing, not that much anyway. So it didn't take me long to realize that I wasn't having enough time to develop properly as a player and or a, a writer or anything. So yes, of course, the second album of a lot of second records, a lot of acts are compromised that way. By the time of their third album, Making Movies in 1980, Knopfler had returned to form. Having moved from London to New York, this new environment would influence his songwriting, no more so than on the classic Romeo and Juliet. I suppose I was thinking along a more of a West Side Story, kind of a life rather than a Wild West End kind of a, a line. I was playing my national with this guitar like this and just maybe fiddling around in, in, in the key. It's like, it's almost like a, semi-banjo-y kind of a thing. And I started some, from somewhere else. I started there rather than there. I started there and, and, and I was trying to find a way into the lyrics for Romeo and Juliet. I sort of saw the Romeo figure as a kind of figure of fun, you know. So there is the key and that's where the guitar's tuned to. I'd always get people saying, how did you do that? And it's really just a kind of happy accident. So you love struggle, Romeo. Got it serenaded, laying everybody low with a love song that he made. Finds a street light, he steps out of the shade. He says, "You and me, babe, how about it?" Juliet says, "Goodness me, Miss Romeo, you nearly give me a heart attack." He's underneath the window, she's singing Hey la, my boyfriend's back You shouldn't come around here Singing up with people like that Anyway, what you gonna do about it? Juliet The dice was loaded from the start And I bet Then you exploded in my heart And I forget, I forget Song. And when you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong. I enjoy playing the song now. Some of those songs they just seem to want to go on and as long as they've got a life I'll enjoy playing it. I've got to try and find something in it for myself when I do it so that I just to try to make sure that there's something real in it happening for me all the time. It's in the dream was just the same. I dreamed your dream for you, so now your dream is real. How can you look at me as if I'm just another one of your deals? When you can fall for chains of silver, you can fall for chains of gold, you can fall for pretty strangers, and the promises they own. You promise me everything. You promised me thick and thin Now you just say, oh me, oh yeah You know, I used to have a scene with you Junior year When we made love You used to cry You said, oh, 
Like the stars above Oh, I love you, baby, till I die Then there's a place for us You know the movies When you only realize You was just the time before I don't think you do necessarily know which, which song is better than another. They're just different. They're like, they're, they're like people, and, and you have to do the best thing by them. And you, you do the best thing by them almost like a little person. Then they grow up, and you do the best thing. They're the boss, and then they, they walk away from you. When, when they're recorded, off they go, and they have their life. The song's a tunnel of love. For the song Tunnel of Love, also on the Making Movies album, Knopfler was drawing inspiration from memories of his childhood growing up in the Northeast. The biggest fair in Europe comes to Newcastle every year, and that was a, like a magnet for me. I mean, I was just always lost in the middle of it. Also, when I was little, we used to go to Colour Coats and Whitley Bay on the train from South Gosford Station. It was an electric train that went out there, and we used to go there in the Spanish city is uh, something that I remember. I've been on a just a roller coaster ride for the past few years. I realised that that's what I was going to do. I realised that, that was my life, and you know, that was the way it was all going to be. I was just. I was in the in the in the middle of it, in the eye of the storm, really, and it just. But I was just riding just fine. I was doing it. I was hanging in there, and I was determined that I was going to go on. Travels had taken me to New York at this point, but the, the, I knew where I was from, and you know, the, it's a process that started at Colour Coats. It's a process that started in Whitley Bay. It's a process that started in Newcastle. Maybe even earlier, you know. And th that all of this stuff comes back to who you are as a little person, you know, and it all still influence, influences what I do. Away, away. Away, away. 